I want to just bring a, a few people up so that we can sort of form a bit of a, a group. A boring group. Yes, a little boring group, and we can go around the back. But we were also very fortunate in those early years to be joined by a British Army major with an absolutely delightful, bubbling personality and a ton of creative energy. John Harper Nelson, mm -hmm. who became a very familiar figure. Mm -hmm. Come on up. I mm -hmm. you say he's still a ton of energy and a very entertaining figure. I uh, spent a very pleasant hour or two over a glass of red the other night with John at his home. John, welcome. Join us. Oh, this is a, this is a surprise. I wasn't expecting to have to. Um, uh, say anything this afternoon. So, well, um, you know when I had a glass of bread with you, uh, uh, and your yeah. wonderful veranda overlooking yeah. the swan, and you started telling me the story about the phone call you received from the manager. You were an announcer at the time, and the chap said something about your work in the, in the Crown Film Unit, and would you come and join them down in television? I thought you might tell us that story. It led to your linking one of our very early current affairs programmes. How much more that could be? Um, <laughs> I, you see, it, um, old age has come over me. My memory is completely gone. Um, I can't remember what that story was. Well, that was, <laughs> what was it? Was it 63? 60, uh, it was something 63, First Current Affairs Program. Oh, West Coast 63. West Coast 63. Yes. Oh, yes. That's, well, cause that, that was an amazing thing. That's what really got me into television. That um, I was minding my own business on radio putting on straight records on what was then the, the serious program, which was 6WF in those days, because um, it, 6WF was the most powerful station, and we all had to broadcast Parliament. And Parliament had to go out over the most powerful station. So for ages, 6WF was the serious music station. So I was there putting on um, bits of symphonies and things, when suddenly Arthur Pover came in um, and said, uh, he was the assistant manager, uh, assistant program director, and he said, I've been looking at your CV and had a crisis. We've, um, John Pennington's just on the first one of the, of the new current affairs program called West Coast 63, and he's been called over to Sydney. And we've got nobody who has had any experience of doing films. And he, say, he, he said, I looked up your CV and saw that you'd been a scriptwriter and film director with the old Crown Film Unit back in the UK and with the Colonial Film Unit. And that uh, I'd had, in fact, spent quite a long time making documentary films before I came to Australia. And my sister, who was in the film industry, she was casting director of Ealing Studios. So I had quite a, uh, a knowledge of the film business and suddenly found myself, within a week to go, watching John Pennington do, do his last program. And then the next week, I was on. And, and uh, I had to concoct a program. And the funny thing was, in those days, the only news cameras were with the news department. And poor Fred Coops, who died last week, was our cameraman. And I used to have the 16mm camera every Tuesday. That's all, one day a week, I could have the 16mm camera to do any interviews or anything I wanted to do for the program coming up on Friday night. And um, so you had to work it. That uh, you, We tried to have two film uh, bits and then a, a middle 10 minute bit, we did sort of three 10 minute sections. And this went on, it was going to be for 13 weeks. And about tw 26 weeks later, we're getting up to Christmas, and Dick Oxenberg, thank goodness, came in from, uh, from Calgary and, and took it over. Because he was in the talks department, I wasn't in the talks department, I was, a, I was an announcer. And because of this, I got switched into, uh, into news reading. So it was Earl and me and Clive Hale and Ian Beatty were really the four regulars. There, that was it. It was lovely having you with us. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um,